There are some great lenses for the Sony ZV-E10 and of course other Sony APS-C crop sensor cameras like the A6000 series. And if you are like me, you got the Sony ZV-E10 with the 16 to 55 millimeter f3.5 to 5.6 kit lens. The kit lens by all means is not a slouch and depending on what you are shooting, the kit lens does a pretty good job for YouTube videos. If you purchase the Sony ZV-E10 for YouTube and wanting to spread your wings, needing some new lenses to fulfill and elevate your creative outlet, then stay tuned. Hi everyone, I'm Ryan and welcome to the Elevate Project. I purchased my Sony ZV-E10 last year in 2021 to elevate my YouTube video quality and use the kit lens for a very long time. This is great as a beginner because for an extra $100, you get a very capable kit lens giving you a wide angle at 16 millimeters. And when you need to get a tight shot and get close for some B-roll, you have a zoom range up to 55 millimeters. The aperture does start at an f3.5 and during the day and in good lighting conditions, you can get very sharp images and video footage. When you start getting to f4.5, 5.6, the kit lens doesn't perform as well in low light. So other than low light conditions, what do other lenses give you? First is the aperture. When you get an f-stop of 1.4 and 1.8, the lens will be wide open, taking in more light and giving you a greater depth of field, giving you that blurry background effect. Especially if you are looking for a nice lens for YouTube, everyone, including myself, loves to have that blurry background effect. Second, to have a lens that can zoom or reach further than 55 millimeters, maybe you are wanting to punch in further to a subject or a product shot. Maybe if you are like me, using your camera to film family events like dance recitals and soccer games, and you are further away from the action. Now I know there are a lot of reasons to get more lenses outside of the kit lens. And for YouTube and for beginners, you might be looking for that one and done lens, set it and forget it. So before we get into specific lens options, there are two types of lenses to get, which are prime lenses and zoom lenses. The kit lens is a zoom lens that gives you a range, which in this case is 16 to 55 millimeters. It gives you the ability to zoom in and out within that focal range. Some great advantages to the kit lens, it does have stabilization in the lens and has a power zoom feature as well. So you can zoom right from the lens as well. A prime lens gives you one focal length, but usually will always give you access to open up the lens, giving you a nice aperture of 1.4 versus 3.5 on the kit lens. Within a reasonable budget, you can find zoom lenses within with an aperture of f2.8, which isn't bad at all for the Sony ZV-E10. With prime lenses, you physically have to move back or move forward toward your subject or the true manual zoom. Now, even if you get a prime lens for video work on the Sony ZV-E10, you can actually use clear optical zoom, which will give you the ability to zoom up to 1.5 times. That isn't bad considering the Sony ZV-E10 shoots 4K video over sampled 6K. So when you zoom in using the clear optical zoom, you are not losing much quality, if any. However, your autofocus and tracking is going to change slightly. Okay, let's first look at prime lenses options if you want to replace the zoom range of 16 millimeters to 55 millimeters from the kit lens. There is the Sigma trio of prime lenses that start at 16 millimeters, 30 millimeters, and 56 millimeters, all giving you an aperture of f1.4. I personally didn't purchase all the lenses at the same time, and for video, I really only use one out of the three lenses 90% of the time, right now anyways. For me and my talking head videos, as you can see, I have a studio lit situation, and I use the Sigma 16 millimeter lens, and this lens is a bit larger and heavier than the kit lens. It is a prime lens, so only has one focal length, and gives me an aperture of f1.4 wide open, taking in a lot of light, and giving me a nice sharp image. 
I absolutely love this lens. And yes, Sony does sell a great 15 millimeter lens specifically made for APS-C crops, Sony cameras at a more expensive price point. There are some advantages to that price point. For example, it is smaller and lighter, has physical programmable buttons and an autofocus manual focus switch. For me, doing talking head is a set it and forget it affair. And I've been happy with the quality of my Sigma lens with no temptation to spend extra because it's on a tripod and I am not worried about the size or weight of the Sigma 16 millimeter lens. It gets me a bit of a blurry background or a depth of field and I'm less than an arm's length away from my background. That was the first lens I ever bought for my Sony ZV-E10. Upgrading my kit lens and I love this lens and even today is my primary lens for talking headshots like this one. The next lens I purchased was the Sigma 30 millimeter lens and like the 16 millimeter, it is a set it and forget it affair with a tighter shot. I noticed when I wanted a tighter shot with a 16 millimeter lens, I either literally had to have the, this lens centimeters away from me. And in some situations, I just wanted a nice tight shot. Now there is a little hack if you wanted to just use the 16 millimeter lens with a tighter shot which does work great if you are just doing talking headshots in setting, is setting the active stabilization on the Sony ZV-E10. It crops in around the same equivalent framing of the Sigma 30 millimeter lens from the same position. Now there is a couple of reasons why I wanted the actual 30 millimeter lens and not always using active steady shot, which is for photography. I started to learn photography and learning about different uses for different types of shots and for everyday family portraits. This is a great lens when I am up and about with the family. Also, if I wanted to start filming with multiple angles, having the 16, having the 30 millimeter lens is a great lens for a top down shot or for a different angle to give you a tighter shot to change the film and make your videos more dynamic. Now that I have two cameras, I actually don't use the 30 millimeter lens too often, more specifically as my main talking head angle. I literally use the 16 millimeter Sigma lens for 95% of my talking head shots. To cover the whole range of the prime lenses, I recently purchased the last lens in the Sigma Trio, the 56 millimeter. This was more for photography, the sweet spot focal length for portraits. Again, learning photography and my kids growing up so fast. I wanted to be able to take nice photographs, especially for my for their special events. My daughter dances ballet, Highland dance, and Irish dance. It is a nice portrait lens when she is dancing and in her costumes. I also wanted a focal length for filming my kids' events like recitals. And the 56 millimeter in combination with the clear optical zoom feature does the trick for some situations. So obviously to replace the whole range of the kit lens, this trio has some advantages and disadvantages. First, because they are prime lenses, you do have to switch lenses if you are out and about. For my YouTube videos, and if you are planning more talking head videos, you can still get away with one lens like I did with the 16 millimeter lens if I wasn't taking photography as seriously. And I would have just stuck to the 16 millimeter lens and passed on the 30 and this 56 millimeter lens and kept the kit lens for everything else. The advantage is that aperture and lens quality, arguably giving you nicer, better, sharper footage, depth of field, and blurry background. Now for me, for the type of videos I make, I was in love with and have become a pro prime lens all day long. With my kids' activities and being farther away from the action, this 56 millimeter focal length sometimes doesn't cut it, and I want to zoom in closer to the action for video and for pictures. So when shopping for the one and done lens, especially when traveling around and minimizing bringing so many lenses, I was looking for a nice zoom lens. There are a lot of great options from Sigma, Tamron, and Sony. Because we are looking at zoom lenses to replace the kit lens, some great options are the Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter, with an aperture f2.8, which essentially is the trio at f2.8. 
The next lens I looked at was the Tamron 17 to 70 millimeter, which again has an aperture of f2.8 throughout the zoom range. I personally haven't tried these lenses, and if you aren't going to get any prime lenses, and you want to get a one and done lens to cover the kit lens range, and then some, I would go with the Tamron lens. That is personally because I would use 60 millimeters and set it and forget it for talking head. This is a bit of a larger lens compared to the Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter. And the Sigma honestly would be a great travel lens for 95% of your shots and it's nice and small. For me, because I have the Sigma Trio prime lenses, and if you are in the same situation, I wanted a focal range that can cover me beyond 56 millimeters. And the lens I chose is the Sony 18 to 105 lens at f4. This can be the one and done lens as well giving up two millimeters on the wide end for beginners. Obviously, you can spend more. There are other great lenses that can cost three times this much for a similar zoom range with a wider aperture. And if I was going to have just two lenses, I would choose the Sigma 60 millimeter lens and this Sony 18 to 105 lens. Now you probably heard everything I said about the kit lens, about aperture, and having a lens that can open up more than f3.5 to 5.6 as it zooms into 55 millimeters. And this lens is an f4 all through the zoom range. So why this lens? I have the other lenses to cover up to 56 millimeters. If I really want the f1.4, what I really wanted is a range beyond 56 millimeters. And the Tamron 70 to 70 almost hit the mark for me. When I was filming my daughter's recitals and my son's soccer games, this gives me better distance and it is f4 all the way to 105 millimeters versus the kit lens is close up at an aperture it closes up at an aperture of f5.6 and the Tamron only goes up to 70 millimeters so this is super versatile lens and because of the f4 at 56 to 105 i can also achieve a nice depth of field depending on where my main subject is in relation to the background so for a beginner YouTuber that just purchased the Sony ZV-E10 and is ready to purchase some lenses, I hope this helps you in your purchasing decision. If I was strictly just doing videos and not worried about photography because my iPhone does a pretty good job for the quick shots here and there, I would only purchase the Sigma 16mm and use the kit lens for everything else. If you're like me and want to film other things at a distance, from the second lens, I would probably recommend the Sony 18 to 105 millimeter, which is an impressive lens. It's native Sony lens, so it's got quick autofocus, and it's so versatile for both video and photos. If you found value in this video, you know what to do. It helps support the channel, and if you like the content like this one, watch one of these videos up here. Be safe, stay awesome, and I'll catch you in the next one.